Okay, so what we're going to do is just briefly go over some of this stuff again that we've talked about in class as a, as a little recap. Now, here was our first text and we're trying to recreate it here. So I can just type in text boxes like I have here, but let me just show you again how to do that. So if we come over here to the text box, remember there's two ways of typing. If we just click once, we can just start typing now. So for example, how and then two. There I have it there, that's the text box. If we have it like that, it's easy to scale. See that? I can scale it. The other way we can do it is get the text box and draw the shape like that. And now when I type, I just type in here like this. And when I get to the end of the box, it's immediately changing for me. So I've got those options. That's why I might use that. So when, it, when we're drawing a lot of text like in here, we would use a text box. If we're doing a heading like here, just click one time. Click on here and just start typing. Okay, and then we've got this advantage, we can do this. And also that means we can come to the side and turn it around, see that? But this box, because it's a big text box, we can't we turn it around the same. See what happens when we turn it around? It's difficult, isn't it? It doesn't quite do it right. So the other two different things to think about there, we've got those two tools there. When we have it over here, this remember this is the kerning, so if I select all the text and I go Alt and the arrows to pull it apart. ALT plus the arrow up or down. So I'm using these keyboards. The one that says ALT and an arrow. Either the arrow that way or that way or up and down. Look for those and you're going to use those together to do that. Now we did another thing, didn't we, in here. We, uh, we might change that T by changing to outline. So if I have my text here, I can I can have my text here. Once I've typed it, I can go here, type, create outlines. Remember that. We need to come here, type, create outlines. Then we have it there, and then we can change shapes. So we'll do that in the next one. Let's now come into here. Here is our other one, the homework, the most recent homework. So I've got... It's set over here. I've not quite finished it, but I'm close to it. So let's have a look what I've done. So I've had this F here. It wasn't quite right. I'll just show you how I did it. Here's my F. Just do an F like that. Because it's um, a heading. I just want to do it like that. Then I can make it big. But then straight away we see one of these problems where, where it's not lining up. So if I draw it down in here. Let's have a look on this text down here. If I zoom in on this one, we see this little problem I'm having here where this is... This bit here, right, it's, uh, let's get that just right. This bit's not right, is it? It's overlapping too much. So remember what we can do. We have the text here. First of all, if I want to change it very specifically, I need to go create outlines. Then I have it there. Now we've got the two selection tools. We need to go direct selection. We click on that. I'm going to click on that button there and this one here. And now when I've got them, I'm going to move it back. And there's my shape there. That's it, I've almost done it. And I might zoom in close and check how that's done. When I zoom in really close, it's not bad, is it? But this is not exactly right. So I'm going to click on that. Yeah. Now I've got another problem happening where it's getting too close to these lines. So I, I want to make sure these guides are gone. See, there's lock guides. I'm going to hide, clear the guides. I don't want any guides. And I don't want any snap to. Over here, sometimes you see a snap to. See these snap to's? That's all off. That's good. Now I don't like what's happening down here. See this? So I'm going to zoom right in and you need to move these tools around here. See it as I'm moving it around to make it look smoother? That's much better, isn't it? And I do that in the same, all the points. So you're zooming out, then zoom in. That's not too bad. Okay? Now we have the same problem here because this F's much longer, isn't it? So when I'd have the two Fs, so now I'm coming to this selection tool, see what I did? Now I want to copy it, I've got two of them, and now I swing it around. See if I go to the corner and it changes to that shape, hold down shift, and we can turn it around like that. There we go, we've got our other shape. Now they are lining up there aren't they that's what I'd want to do there but this bit needs to be much longer doesn't it so we do the same thing we come into our selection tool see those two I want that one and that one now it's pretty hard to see 
So I'm going to zoom in again. You're continually zooming in and out in Illustrator, that which means you need to move the boxes around. Now let's get them again. That one, yes. That one, yes. Now I need to move it up. See you have a problem with this happening? Hold down shift. If you hold down shift again it will go straight. See that it's kind of bang, forcing it in. So I'll just write that in there for you. Hold shift and you know different keys that you're working with and the pointer tool or the other tools you're using or any tool you're using. So I use that a lot with also with this tool here. Now again, my kerning, my lettings. Illustrator has remembered the last kind of letting I used, so it's it's gone back to the old one, and I want to move it like that. So let's zoom out here and see where we are. So we got those things. That's how you make how you'd make them. Obviously, with this text here, it's pretty easy. You're just going to type it and then turn it around. So for example, if I had this tool here, I could just turn that around. No, I can't remember because I typed that like that. But if I typed it in one box, if I'd done this, it would be easy to turn around. So if, for example, if I write Swiss, now it's easy to turn around because I just clicked once. And now I can turn it around. Again, someone was asking how do I change color? Well, this is the color thing here. Let's come over to the window and swatches. We want to choose the white color. See the white? Nothing's changed because I didn't click on it. I need to click on my shape. See, I've clicked on my shape and see the color here is black. Now I want it white. See how it changed to white? Now this thing here is the outline. That's the edge of the color. For example, if I click now, it's white. If I want to switch it around, I can either do it, click on it there or click this button. And you'll see things changing up here when we know what we've got. So I now got this color. And I've now added that. See, I've got one point, and I can change lots of things over here as well. See, it's gone red. Um, I want it white, though, so I'm going to leave it white. And I want to remember that that's five point, so I need to do the same thing with this one. Stroke, five point. Now, that's gone white. I don't want that white. I want that black. So I come back to my panel and go black. And now it's the same as here, isn't it? It's a bit too close together, so I just click on it. Hold, remember, hold down Shift to keep things straight. And I it, see it moving around and... Shift is a really good and key tool to use in Illustrator. There we have it there. Or you can just use those arrow keys a wee bit to move things around. So that's how you do that. Now I want to come in and show you this text in here. So when we're making this text here, I have now done the opposite way. Because it's a lot of body text, I've gone in like that. And then I'll just type in here. Okay, and I've used that lorem ipsum text in here. That doesn't matter, I just want some text, but I wanted to show you something. So when we have this text in here, we're going to use this paragraph tool over here. See this paragraph? And we have a lot of choices, much more than in Microsoft Word or other software. Now this is a justify with the last align aligned right. Justify means from side to side, it's exactly straight. And that last one is aligned right. Can you see that? And if we come across and look at Adrian Fruiter's design, that's exactly what he did. So we want to watch this and check. See what he's done here? This is the, what he's doing here. See that's justified and aligned right. Why would he do that? Well, visually it looks good. Can you see on his design this nice clean line down here now? See what's happened in here? Um, and I'll just make that transparent so you can see underneath what's happening. See how he's done that? This is what the designer's done. So that that's a nice straight line down there, because he's got a very straight design. So if he had that the other way around, it wouldn't look as good. The line wouldn't be as strong. So let's just compare, we, and we can't adjust that one because it's the JPEG, but this one we can. So let's see what that would look like if we aligned left. See, it doesn't look as good. Look at this rough line down here. It's nowhere near as cool and clean. So I, we're going to leave it as he had it there. And then he had another text box underneath up a bit and now if we have a look at his design over here we see the other one has a line left at the bottom see that it's different there see I've just copied that text box there and now I'm going to go and change that one to a justify with last align left see that bottom line just change a wee bit now it's a small difference but it's important and we put that in there 
Now, I'm going to come and have another look and see if he's lining things up. When we see here that he has some nice clean lines along here, see that? That Swiss and all that text along the bottom is lining up, so we need to do the same thing here. We're going to do that here, just quickly to line up. I'm going to get rid of all these tools now, except this one. I want this align tool. Now these text boxes are really too big. I'm just going to, and I'm just going to pull that up to there. Good. That's close enough. And now, quickly to get the see how I've got, a, I want to align all this along the bottom. So what I'm going to do now, I'm happy with this text. I'm going to go create outlines because it's much easier to line a whole lot of text up like this. So when I finish, I go create outlines. Create outlines, type, create outlines. Now, I see it's, the boxes are the same. If I go to the view here, you'll see what's happened. See these text boxes now are right on the bottom of them. So I can line all three of these up. And I want to align all of them up. So I'm going to click, hold down shift again, click on all three, and then use this tool here. You see it's sitting up here, but it's also here. It's the same tool here. See what happened? Bang, they're all exactly right now on the bottom. Nice and clean, isn't it? Now, I want to align this. I want to make sure all these things here are lined up that way now. So I can just do it by eye, but that's probably the easiest way, actually. But Or I could do the same thing, create outlines. Now, see, it's right on the edge of the box. This is another reason to use this, this and this. Although it might come in and align with this line here. Let's see what happens. Yes, it has. See that? It's coming in the aligned here because I've got this outline. So I'm going to have to do it by eye, but it's pretty close. I might just nudge with my arrow key. That's better there. So that's all nice and clean. Let's do the same thing here. See what's happened here? This one, I'm going to need to do type create outlines. This one and this one. And I'm going to use this one now, align right. See what happened? That this, The F's moved over a wee bit, hasn't it? So I'm going to move that back. Not sure. I'm going to get it exactly right by using the guide. There we go. There's the guide. We're going to have the, now I know the same problem is going to happen in here. Let's get them all lined up. First of all, this one, this one, and this one, and we're going to align left. I'm going to use my guide. Pretty good this time. There we go. That's it. Now I think you'll find that this, all these things are aligned at the bottom. So I'm going to again type, same thing. Create outlines. Now let's line all these up on the bottom. Shift now. Is that outlines? Yes. Is this outlines? No. That's a text box. See that here? Create outlines. Now we're exactly right. Bang, bang. Align where? Align the bottom. Done. Let's zoom out and have a look. Pretty good, isn't it? Now we've got one more thing we need to do, which is make this box. So we're going to come over here and use this box. See here, I'm going to draw that. That's There's the black box. That's a box. I'll just pull that over to the side for a start. Let's get that over there. Black. So I can go that way, or remember I can get my swatches up. I like the swatches much easier. Get that exactly right. There it is nice and black. There's my main black. Now if I put it here, it should be all good, shouldn't it? No, it's gone on the top. Okay, what do I do now? So I can use layers, or the easier way is this. For me, is arrange, send it back. See now it's at the back? And we're very close, aren't we? Except for this little bit here. And also we need to bring that into the middle. So now I come in here and I'm going to bring up that white. So again, there's a few different ways of doing this. Right now I'm just going to do a nice easy one where we use these, this tool the same as before. And let's get that point. Shift and get that point. And then, oh, see I didn't get them both. I only got one. Shift. Now I've got both. Hold down shift again. Make sure it's exactly right. Get it in there. Bang. That's very close. It's not quite right, but that's good enough. Let's zoom out. There we go. Finished. Pretty close, isn't it? That's pretty close to the, the other one over here. Let's zoom in. Check them out. Very close, isn't it, to these. This text is not quite right, but this is all very close to the, to what this design has originally done. So that's how you do that. Let's. There's one, so you see both my designs sitting in here. This is how I design. I've copied things and put things all around the edge, but the important stuff's in the middle. I just want to come in here and recap on a few things. 
So here's the tool, tools. Remember this, we're going to use this type tool. For headings, we just type like that. Why? Because it's easy to make it bigger, we can turn it around. That's good. However, if we want a lot of text, we're going to use the next one, this one, body text. So we're going to draw a box like that and write in the text box. And it goes across the edge and then it comes down. That's good. Now we have a few other options that I haven't talked about at all. You just have a quick play around with these and we'll talk about these tomorrow. But see this type on a text tool? Lots of different things here, isn't there? Let's check some of those things out um, tomorrow or the next class. We'll have a look at how these things work down here. There's a lot of different options there. Create outlines we talked about when we have our text here. Remember we can come up here and create outlines. Um, filling inside a text with an image. This is an interesting thing we can do as well. We'll talk about these things here next time. But we can fill a text inside it. Um, and I'll show you how to do that next time. And we can use text with some of these shapes and using the Pathfinder tool. So these two things at the end are very cool, much more visual things we can do with text. But make sure you're familiar with these first four things at the end of today or the end of this video. Make sure you can do one, two, three, and four that I'm just typing up. And we'll leave five and six for next lesson. Thank you guys, that's it.